Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Um, so many people. <laughs> I know. There's, there's a, a lot of people, and project. there's so many like creative uh, projects that I hadn't thought of, and that's fun. Yeah. You're like kind of scoping out the competition. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Always. laughs> okay. What's the what's the coolest part of your display? Uh, this right here. It's, uh, what my project's about. It's putting the engine in front of the wing on the plane. Now, would you fly that? No. I have a solar panel, and what I'm doing is I'm taking a Fresnel lens to uh, concentrate light and make the solar panel more efficient. You like yellow and orange? Yeah. I thought it was appropriate that's, for the sun. Yeah, that's pretty appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I did was I took three uh, human subjects of different age ranges, and I took four of the most famous energy drinks, and I tested to see which one would affect your pulse rate the most and which one would have the worst side effects. Now, did you have to do a lot of experimenting with drinking all, all the time? Yes. <laughs> all right, my project is about the effects of batteries on the growth of plants and how they affect the growth of yeast. So, I tested three types of batteries, alkaline, silver oxide, button cell battery, and rechargeable. And I can conclude from my experiments that the rechargeable battery is the safest. How long does it take you? Many months. Many months? Many, many months of... I didn't count. This is my second year study. My first year, I wanted to see if sleep deprivation could decrease lifespan. And I found that, yes they did, complete sleep deprivation decreased your lifespan a total of 36%. So now I want to say, what about high schoolers who have to pull all-nighters, or uh, nurses that have to work night shifts, truck drivers that work, have to like drive through the night, what about them? So this year, I want to see if antioxidants could help reduce the effects of sleep deprivation. Did you work so long and hard on this that you lost sleep? <laughs> Probably, <laughs> definitely, actually. <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie and this is my project. It's called Tasting Taste Buds and it's about taste buds to see if there's a correlation between how many taste buds you have in your mouth and your taste perception. Have you ever heard of a super taster? I have heard of a super taster and actually one of, actually two of my three tasters were super tasters. That would be something I need to do because I want to be a super taster too. <laughs> My project is which bait catches the most fish. My hypothesis that was that the culprit worm would work the best, and it was true. The culprit worm caught five fish, the spinner bait caught two, and the top water bait caught three. So what's your favorite fish to eat? My favorite fish to eat would probably be bass. Bass. I actually, when, uh, sometimes when we go fishing, we'll keep uh, two or three and cook them for dinner sometimes. Oh, there you go. There you go. You can cook your experiments. That's all, that's all we get. <laughs> For our project this year, we built a roller coaster. Uh, 60 feet of track, 10 feet tall, and in doing this, we were testing the adherence of the cart to the track. In essence, a secondary upstop axle, which is what we tested, would be effective um, for applications on a real-world roller coaster to keep it safer uh, and adhere to the track better. And you should always use the strongest type of axles so they don't fail, like we had in our situation. <laughs> did anybody scream like a little <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did when we were testing it, but I wasn't on the ride. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a hamster? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> we shouldn't be a hamster, but... No. <laughs> Texting while driving is a huge problem today. As 60%, if not more, of teenagers text while they drive, at least on a, re a semi-regular basis. So what we've done is create a system, a fully functional system, where a parent can um, set the restrictions on a child and stop them from texting at the proper times while they're, te while they're driving and also track their location and set a boundary in which they are supposed to remain. Here's geofencing. Geofencing is a way for the parent to set a boundary in which they want their child to remain. And if the child exit exits it, the, child, um, the parent will receive notification. And currently we're trying to port this to the iPhone, but we need um, some Apple 
um, kind of trusty, like some Apple. I also like the iPhones. <laughs> There's an app for everything. My project is about how cell phones could potentially affect brain cells. Yeast cells could be used to mimic brain cells in a conventional way. Yeah, BlackBerry is, it emits more radiation than the other phones tested. And um, based on an educated guess, I would think that an iPhone would have an even stronger effect. Okay. Well, I don't think Apple's going to want to hear that. Yeah. So are you guys going to win? Yeah! Sydney, <laughs> you have to be positive. Well, I did my project. I compared compost and chemical fertilizer using cabbage. Do you like cabbage? Not really. Okay, well, this is my project, Pitch Perfect. Um, I first got the idea because, of course, I'm a flute player. And in band one day, I just kind of thought, you know, what could I do for the science fair? So I decided that I was going to test the kind of making of a flute. So I ended up getting just some PVC pipe and taking it, cutting it um, to some of the measurements suggested by my research. You got, you got to make everything pretty, so duct tape kind of helped me with that. Right. So. <laughs> good. I'm doing soundproofing, and it's actually called soundproofing. So, um, I like how it shows um, how many things you can do in science fair. It gives you a wide variety, and you get to participate in it instead of just being told things, and you um, involve yourself in it.